Hi, everybody. Neil Kravitz here. Welcome to the JCO's Digital Short. This video presentation will be on bracket substitution, taking a bracket from its intended tooth and moving it to a different location in the mouth for a very specific treatment objective. Thank you for your continued support of the JCO. Now, before we get started, I want to review torque values. Remember, positive torque means palatal root torque and negative torque means labial root torque. Think of positive torque as moving those roots back onto bone and negative torque values were moving those roots off of bone. And we need to remember the rules of bracket flipping and switching. If we flip a bracket 180 degrees, we reverse the torque but do not affect the tip. That's where the phrase flip, don't switch comes from. Now, when we switch a bracket within the same arch from the right and left sides, we reverse the tip, but do not affect the torque. Let me give you an example. A classic example of bracket substitution occurs in the first phase of treatment when we want to switch the right and left lateral incisor brackets. We may want to put a left lateral incisor bracket on a right maxillary lateral incisor to add mesial root tip to avoid the mesially erupting maxillary canine. By switching the brackets, we reverse the tip from distal to mesial, but we do not affect the torque. Another example of bracket substitution occurs during a canine lateral substitution. Now, many people like to put a lateral incisor bracket on a substituted canine because the tooth is in the lateral incisor position. I prefer to use a flatter central incisor bracket, which has much more palatal root torque, 17 degrees of palatal root torque to hide those prominent canine roots. Remember, we're dealing with a flat bracket base, so we need to do enameloplasty. If we take a close-up look in my office, this is what it would be. If I have bilateral substitutions, I'll have brackets that are 1-1, one, 1-1. One, one, one. Very easy to remember and very aesthetic. Now, a variation of this technique was popularized by Dr. Marco Rosa, who uses a flipped mandibular second premolar bracket for substituted canines. Now, a mandibular second premolar bracket in its proper orientation will have minus 17 degrees of torque, 17 degrees of labial root torque. When we flip that bracket, the post is now incisal. We have 17 degrees of palatal root torque just like a central incisor bracket, but we have the advantage of the curved bracket base so we can do the enameloplasty later on. If we take a close-up look, you will see Dr. Rosa is using a lower left five on an upper right three and vice versa. The bracket is flipped. Even though the bracket orientation has not changed, the post is incisal. Now, if we have a full complement of teeth and we have a canine that's erupting palatally, we're gonna want to add labial root torque. So we can use our mandibular second premolar bracket, but this time we're going to properly orient it with the post gingival to take advantage of those 17 degrees of labial root torque. For the maxillary molars, if we wanna add buccal root torque, I like to use a lower first molar tube. The lower first molar tubes have 20 degrees of labial root torque or 20 degrees of buccal root torque. If we place the lower right six tube on the upper left six and seven, we can establish a significant amount of buccal root torque. I like to do this for my surgical cases to avoid excessive palatal cusp enameloplasty and also when I'm doing arch wire expansion to avoid those hanging palatal cusps. If we're extracting in the upper arch, this technique has the advantage of having tubes with no distal offsets. When we're finishing class two or class three molar, we don't wanna roll our molars out mesially. In review, when we flip a bracket 180 degrees, we reverse the torque, but do not affect the tip. I like to switch my maxillary lateral incisors during the first phase of treatment to reverse the tip from distal 
to mesial to make room for those maxillary canines. For my canine substitution cases, I prefer to use a central incisor bracket with 17 degrees of palatal root torque, but don't forget Dr. Rose's technique of using a flipped mandibular second premolar bracket. For canines that erupt palatally, where I want labial root torque, I will use a lower second premolar bracket, but this time properly oriented with the post gingival. And for my maxillary molars, when I want buccal root torque, or if I'm finishing class two or class three molar, I'm gonna use lower molar tubes, specifically the lower first molar. Thank you so much.